In the last two blocks I explained you how to calculate the maximum climb angle for an aircraft and the minimum descent angle in gliding flight without engine power. In the current video I will treat the topic maximum rate of climb. This indicates the maximum vertical velocity in meters per second. So it is an indication on how long it will take to reach a certain altitude. Now remember that the condition for maximum rate of climb is not the same as the maximum climb angle. Now I want to be able to calculate the maximum rate of climb in steady flight conditions. So this is a rate of climb which can be sustained for a prolonged period of time. In theory the pilot can pull back the stick rapidly in any flight condition and trade off kinetic energy for potential energy. Now that will result in a large rate of climb for a short amount of time. However, airspeed decreases rapidly at the same time and eventually the airplane will fall back if the pilot keeps the stick pulled back. Now this situation can be very useful if an aircraft for example has to evade a certain object and it also has some military applications. However, that is not the topic of today's lecture. The maximum rate of climb is quasi-steady flight in which the airspeed is more or less constant. Now earlier we derived the two equations of motion for steady symmetric climbing flight. By multiplying the equation of motion parallel to the airspeed vector with the airspeed we obtained the power equation. And this power equation is what we need to work with because it has the rate of climb as a variable in it. In addition we should comply with the constraint that lift equals weight. Now you can see in the power equation that three factors play a role in the rate of climb that can be achieved. The power available, or in other words the characteristics of the propulsion system, the power required, which is the energy needed per second to overcome aerodynamic drag, and finally the aircraft weight. Now when doing performance calculations we typically make a figure with power available and power required for a specific aircraft weight, which we call the performance diagram. So when will the rate of climb be at its maximum? Now the equation shows us that the difference between power available and power required is a measure for the rate of climb. So when flying at a specific airspeed, the distance between the two curves indicates the achievable rate of climb. So whenever the two curves are furthest apart, the rate of climb will be maximum. Now this means that when you have this diagram available, you can directly read off the maximum rate of climb and the corresponding airspeed. It is also possible to calculate the theoretical optimum analytically for one specific scenario. Now this scenario occurs when maximum power available is independent of airspeed. Now this is a simplification we often make for propeller aircraft. So what would in this case be the maximum rate of climb condition? Now that is quite easy. It occurs at the airspeed where the two curves are furthest apart. And that is the condition for minimum power required. So how do we calculate this airspeed and corresponding rate of climb? Now you should remember that the condition right here, minimum power required, is also the condition for maximum endurance, which I already treated in an earlier video. Now if we assume a parabolic lift drag polar, then the optimum CL is indicated on the slide, and this CL can be used to calculate the airspeed to fly at. Now if you cannot remember how this worked, please take a look again at the endurance video. Now when the CL is known, the drag coefficient can also be calculated with the lift drag polar and thereby also the aerodynamic drag in newtons. Now multiplying drag with speed yields the power required and when the aircraft weight and the value for maximum power available are known, the maximum rate of climb can be calculated. Now I can imagine that at first sight this whole process might seem quite complicated. An example calculation for the maximum rate of climb of the Beach King Air is therefore provided on the website. In addition, there is a homework assignment available to calculate it for different aircraft yourself. Now to conclude this lecture, it might be nice to have a look at some typical maximum rate of climb values for commercial aircraft. Now we can see here that the weight influences the rate of climb quite a bit. 
For example, a Vorton Boeing 747 can climb at 2,000 feet per minute, while the much lighter Boeing 737 climbs twice as fast. Now the values shown here are for maximum aircraft weight. And you should note that much larger values can be achieved at the minimum weight condition, since weight directly appears in the equation and also determines the position for the power required curve. Now, of course, there are also world records for maximum rate of climb. In March 2005, Mr. Brovchenko flew a MiG-29, as indicated here, from standstill on the runway to 9,000 meters altitude in just 88 seconds. Realize, however, that this was not a steady and straight flight. So the simplified equations we've used so far cannot be applied to this world record. How to solve this particular problem, the so-called minimum time to climb problem, is a more advanced topic which will be treated in later courses. Now in the next video we will look at the other sides of the spectrum, the minimum rate of descent.